In this video, we will tell you about how the gears of war are turning right now, nuke sniffers, how billionaires are hiding out in their bunkers, and how Michael Jordan could solve one of the biggest foreign policy dilemmas that the world is facing right now. We're also going to give you the latest updates between China, Russia, the United States, with the North Korean conundrum facing the world and making many people fear of a nuclear holocaust. Of course, we're going to give you context on this story and a possible solution that could solve this problem diplomatically and not with a nuclear holocaust. And the gears of war are literally turning as we're seeing massive trains being amassed by Russian military forces heading towards the North Korean border. This is on the heels of China just a few days ago deploying 150,000 troops to the North Korean border as well. And of course, both countries use the excuse of a possible refugee crisis for this mass military mobilization. But understanding the situation geopolitically, it would not surprise me if China and Russia had other interests other than to supposedly help the refugees from this potential North Korean war that we're all facing. As we know, Russia just vetoed a UN statement on North Korea's missile tests, have been protecting North Korea, and also have economic ties to that country. And they are not that pleased with the United States' aggressive actions against North Korea since it was China and Russia who just a few weeks ago were protesting the United States setting up anti-missile defense systems in South Korea. We have both seen China and Russia make very bold stances against the United States when dealing with North Korea, and also Donald Trump's latest moves inside of Syria. Now, the unstable North Korean regime is not backing down as North Korean state media threatened to launch a super mighty preemptive strike that would reduce South Korea and the United States to ashes. Now there's a lot of interesting theories out there about the capabilities of North Korea, whether the United States used the super secret US cyber program in order to derail his missile tests just a few days ago. But experts here in the United States and also top generals are warning that if North Korea does shoot a missile, that the United States may not be able to shoot it down. The United States right now is sending their military might to the North Korean Peninsula, including a nuke sniffer plane that has been sent on an emergency mission to fly over North Korea. Now, with all of this happening, it will be very interesting to see how China responds. And according to some U.S. sources, we're hearing that the United States and China have a consensus on what they will do in order to stop North Korea's missile test. But it's also been very clear that the Chinese foreign policy is very unpredictable and has butted heads with the United States before. And as this is happening, China has put their bombers on high alert for a potential North Korean contingency as everyone is just waiting for the inevitable military strikes against a North Korean country. Now with all of this happening, there's no one on television asking the question why this is happening, how did we get here, and is there any other solution except for a full-out blown war? And to really understand this, you have to understand the tensions that have been brewing between the North Koreans and the United States. Tensions going all the way back to the original Korean War that the United States was involved in that the North Koreans have still not forgotten and are using as their major linchpin for propaganda against their own people to hate the United States. The United States with South Korea and Japan have been doing multiple military drills for years now, practicing a full all-out invasion of North Korea and the nuclear attack of North Korea. The North Koreans of course see this as a threat and have expanded their own military because of this, to the expense of their own people who are literally starving and are going through a horrible humanitarian crisis in their country. Of course, tough sanctions put on North Korea by the United States and the UN have not helped the situation and have created a situation where now 41% of North Koreans are undernourished. And yes, we have to say the decisions by the North Koreans have been very bullish, have been very hawkish, have been very irrational, have been very dumb, but what do you expect from a country whose leader is 33 years old, is a complete psychopath, and has extreme daddy issues? Which of course makes it not easy to negotiate any kind of diplomacy. But we do know one thing, Kim Jong-un, just like his father Kim Jong-il were huge NBA basketball fans. They love that sport and they see individuals like Michael Jordan as their heroes. Kim Jong-il, the previous leader of North Korea, even tried to get Michael Jordan to visit North Korea. And just like his son, Kim Jong-un, are super fans of the NBA star. Now, why does it the United States send over Dennis Rodman, send over Michael Jordan to North Korea, talk to the Korean, have the leader talk to one of his childhood heroes, broker a deal, negotiate, sit down for a second and say, wait, we'll stop the sanctions, we'll stop trying to intimidate you, we'll stop training to bomb and attack you and destroy your country fully, we'll allow food in your country, but you just have to get rid of your nuclear program. 
And if that doesn't work, have Michael Jordan put a grenade in a basketball and throw it at King Jong-un. And that's it. Problem freaking solved. One person has to die instead of everyone inside of North Korea or potentially causing a global conflict between Russia and the United States. I mean, think about it. There's even scholars who are seeing plenty of deterrence to war with North Korea despite all the strong rhetoric that's happening right now. This could be a win-win for both countries without creating more death and destruction in this world. But with Donald Trump's administration and his Secretary of State Tillerson saying, quote, that the diplomacy with North Korea has failed, I do not see this as a possibility, mainly because if you're the United States war machine and military industrial complex, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem starts looking like a freaking nail. And we're seeing that reiterated at us by the US mainstream media who is just pushing for more conflict and war. Why? We don't need that. Oh yeah, the military industrial complex, global elites, deep state are working hand in hand with the mainstream media because they have a sole agenda of dividing and conquering humanity, creating more problems because when we face problems, we will need a solution and that's solution is more government, more control, more war, more power, more enslavement of humanity as these people look down on all of us and laugh as we're fighting on the left and right paradigm. Anyway, I digress. And I know a lot of people are being sensational with all this latest news between Russia and the United States, but there's many nuclear experts who are coming out and saying if there was a nuclear war between Russia and the United States, everyone in the world would die. Now, of course, I don't see this as a likely possibility, but it's a small possibility that should not be an option at all. And the billionaires know about this and they have been preparing for this as we're seeing very powerful people like Peter Thiel moving all the way to New Zealand in order to have an emergency bunker from what many people are saying a potential nuclear war. Nah, I don't have a bunker. You probably don't have a bunker. So why can't we try diplomacy in order to stop these global tensions from erupting in this world? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, especially about the grenade basketball idea to Kim Jong-un. <laughs> I don't know, I may just be crazy, but to me the scenario of diplomacy would be a lot more worthwhile than seeing civilian casualties, war, destruction, and more death on this planet. If you agree, share this video and don't forget to support real independent media on wearechange.org forward slash donate because if you don't, literally we wouldn't exist. And I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart who has been donating, who has been participating, especially during this adpocalypse that has been happening on YouTube because you guys are more important than ever and literally make our slogan, we are change, reality. Thank you again so much for watching. Love ya.